and this man um, dressed as a banana just danced the entire time. It was the, the best last day of a studio. Yeah, hey, this is Yanis from Foles, and uh, we are one of Britain's best bands. Our new album, Life Is Yours, is like a response to the deficit of live music and and life, really, and communal life, you know, due to COVID and lockdowns. It was like kind of an imaginative enterprise to create joy and have music for when the world re-emerges. It's a record for your parties and for the re-emerging of the world. <laughs> We toured the first part and then we'd started touring the second part of the double album. And then like everybody, we just got kind of caught up in the COVID nightmare. So all of our touring was canceled and we went home and we had to kind of readjust our rhythms. Cause you know, when, when we go on tour, like it has its own kind of headspace. So when touring was canceled, we had to kind of readjust to domestic life. And then within that process, we tried to salvage something from it. So what we did was we went to the studio um, and, and the product of that is Life Is Yours. The environment we wrote Life Is Yours in was like a very Spartan, uninspiring white room. The whole process was like quite depressing because, you know, it was like a British winter, which is not great anyway. And a British winter without pubs is even worse. Unlike other records we've written where I feel like, certainly lyrically, um, I try to take like direct inspiration from life and from culture that's going around. On this record, obviously, there wasn't any of that. In some ways, this record is like the biggest imaginative leap that we've ever had to do. Wake Me Up, um, interestingly, it was kind of like the last song to be finished and it, it came together in the very last moments of the studio um, process. And maybe partly because of that, it kind of just felt the freshest. It's like probably one of the most bombastic tracks. So we thought that that would be a cool one to put out first and like it kind of sets the palette for the rest of the record. And then 2AM is just kind of, to us, was just like an archetypal kind of pop song. So often those are the songs that become singles. The next single is going to be 2001 and that's like one of our favourite songs we've ever written, I think. So on this record, we chose four producers to work with and we were excited about the idea of like forming like a tapestry of producers. So the song would be like passed around from one producer to another and, and new influences and new elements would be braided into the songs. And then we would either add to those or then subtract. But it, it made, the, made the experience of making the record more interesting for us because we had these four other artistic inputs coming into each song. The record is a much richer um, record because of the four producers. We relocated basically for most of the recording process to Peter Gabriel's studio. And on the last night that we were there, we drank a lot of tequila and the engineer dressed up in, as a banana and we listened to the album three or four times back to back and this man um, dressed as a banana just danced the entire time. It was the, the best last day of a studio experience that we'd ever had and it was largely because of the banana outfit and the tequila. The fact there's three of us. So, you know, we started off like five of us. For me, like the band was always a family. I think one of the main drives to being in a band was a sense of community and a sense of family. The power of the music and the um, the commitment to the songs and stuff has, it hasn't changed. Whether it's five or three, it's like the feeling remains the same. The Pixies were a band that kind of changed my life. Like I heard them when I was 13 and um, a great band can affect you at that point in your life. Like when you're a teenager, you're so uh, porous to, to music and you can become so deeply attached to it. And for me, like the Pixies just like, were endlessly fascinating and beautiful and weird and like raw. And um, they made me want to play guitar and they made me want to write songs. <laughs> I watched um, a band called My Bloody Valentine. Yeah, they were called the Shoegaze Band. They're like a 90s band from the UK, but they were playing some shows like a few years ago. Um, it's probably like the loudest thing I've ever heard. Um, they ha it's so loud on stage that they have to have glass partitions for each player. A lot of their songs are very blissed out and kind of um, pretty. Um, but then there's this one portion of the set that they do live, which is like 20 minutes of um, absolutely punishing noise. And it goes on so much longer than you expect it to, that it's a kind of ordeal that you have to go through. And then at the end, you're rewarded by them cracking back into the prettiness. And it's just, it was just a great show. 
Probably There Will Be Blood by Paul Thomas Anderson. I never get tired of it. I can just watch it again and again. Daniel Day-Lewis's performance is amazing. I like the novelistic like spread of it, the way it's filmed, the moral of the story is deep. I think it's a masterpiece really, so. The last like book that I really like fell for was just like the collected poems of Paul Celan. I don't know why, but like I'd never read him before. They're like perfectly captured hallucinatory dream settings. I read the first one and I felt like I'd been looking for those poems all my life.